All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna delete out the default cube. I'm gonna press Shift A, I'm gonna to go to Mesh and then Plane. And then I'm just gonna scale this a little bit on the Y and then a little bit on the X axis as well. Now what I wanna do here is I wanna go into the side view and just take this edge right here and simply extrude this at about a 45 degree angle. This is just kind of a estimate. And then we're just gonna extrude this edge down on the Z just to create a basic shape like this. I'm not too worried you know, how much this is angled. It's fine right here. And now what I wanna do is I want to go to this edge and then bevel it. Now before I bevel this, I first want to apply the scale. The reason for that is that if I don't, it kind of bevels more in this direction than in this direction. And that's just because the scale is not applied here. So I'm gonna press Control A and apply the scale. Now if I go into edge mode, we can go ahead and bevel that. We can go here and bevel this area as well. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make it a little bit more round and just more, uh, you know, kind of like this, right? Then we're just gonna go into object mode again and I'm gonna press Shift A. And this time we're gonna add in a cylinder and I'm gonna change the cylinder count from 32 to 16 vertices, just so it is a lower resolution. Now guys, the reason you want a lower resolution whenever you're doing a sub-D workflow is because the lower resolution is going to be the base, and then as you use sub-D, it'll be a higher and smoother resolution. So always start low poly when you're doing a sub-D workflow. Now I'm going to go ahead and rotate the cylinder 90 degrees over the Y. I'm going to scale this down to about here, and then I'm just going to scale this on the X, and then just move it to this position roughly. And then what I wanna do is I want to once again apply the scale because if I try to bevel it um, anywhere, it's just, for example, if I uh, bevel this back area, it's kind of skewed. So I'm gonna press Control A to apply the scale to remove that issue. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and run a difference Boolean here on this object, all right? Now, I do wanna be a little bit careful of where I position this because um, I'm gonna to need to do some basic retopology, so I want to kind of coordinate where these vertices are gonna be uh, appearing basically, right? So for example, each of these little ridges right here, there's gonna be a vertex when I apply that Boolean. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, bevel this back area, just like that, just so we have a nice round area there in the back. So I can kind of imagine like this vertex here, I can merge to here, this vertex right here, I can merge to here, and uh, yeah, that should be a pretty easy setup. But let's go ahead and just kind of imagine uh, where we're gonna be joining these points up. And I think this will be okay, this position right here. I'm gonna move that down just a little bit here. And that should be fine. And then I'll go ahead and hide this with the H key, go to this object and then apply the Boolean. And then what I wanna do here is I simply want to merge that one to there. You can also press the M key to do that. I'm just using the machine tools out on, it's a bit quicker. So M, merge at last, you can merge that one there as well. Then we're just gonna add in a loop cut and then join these two with the J key. And then we're going to join this one with the J key. And then we have an end gone here. So I'm just gonna make one more join right here to kind of get that result. And then just to kind of, you know, even these out, I'll just slightly move this over just so everything's nice and even if that makes sense now what we can do is we can select everything we can go to mesh and then symmetrize and in this case it's going to be over the y-axis so it's going to be negative y to positive y make sure it's not the other way around or you're going to symmetrize the wrong side so negative y to positive y so this side is now updated just like that and now we have a pretty decent result right here so now what I want to do is I want to add in a loop right here with control R just to keep that consistent. And then I'm going to go over here and move this back and we're just going to join this up. I think there's already an edge right there. So that's good. And then we can go ahead and join that one to there. And then we can add in one more loop with control R and then join that one to right there. And then one more area over here. We can go ahead and join that one to that one, right? And then again, select everything, mesh, and then symmetrize to symmetrize that. And then what we can do right here on these two end gons, we can press F3 
with the faces selected and search for grid fill. This is a new feature in, I believe, 4.5. We can slide this down a bit. And that's just going to give you a nice uh, grid fill right there. Keep it nice in quads. And that should be fun. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add in maybe six loops right there to keep it nice and even, as you can see. And then I'll just go ahead and move these up a little bit, just so it's, uh, again, nice and even. And I think this is a pretty good uh, starting point right here. Now what I want to do is I want to go into object mode and just uh, press Control 1, Control 2, Control 3. Just kind of see how exactly this is uh, subdividing, all right? Looks pretty decent. Um, we can also check here in the back. You can see it's a little bit pinched just because of that particular area. So what I might actually do here, I could slide these back a bit just to kind of uh, have a bit of a nicer transition. I think that'll look better. So you can kind of see that. And I'm kind of okay with that shape. I think that'll be all right. And then what I want to do here is I want to go to edge mode and then go here to select and then select sharp edges. That's going to select these areas. And then I'm just going to press alt shift click to deselect that area right there. And then I just want to press control B. Scroll down until we have a chamfer and then maybe just add in one segment. This is going to give us a natural proximity loop. So I'm going to go to about there. However, it is going to overlap in this region over here, as you can see. So what I might actually do is I might, I'm gonna see how this looks if I dissolve out this region with Control X. That might be a bit of a better option if I just dissolve out these areas here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then maybe just slide this portion here back a little bit. And that should be a little bit better. And then I can go ahead and just see how that's subdividing. Again, it's pretty nice. So select and then select sharp edges right here. I'm gonna deselect these portions and then just press Control B. We'll add a small isolation loop. And now we're gonna have this shape right here with the sub D. So you can kind of see the result we have. I'm gonna go here into matte cap and uh, let me just turn on cavity. It'll look a little bit cleaner in the UI. So this is the sub D result right here, as you can see. Doesn't need to be like super high resolution. We could even just do Control one and we'll have that type of result. Now what I want to do here, this is very, very important. I want to add in a generate array and I want to array along the Y. So I'm going to turn the X to zero, press tab, turn the Y to one. And then I'm just going to increase the count by sliding in that direction, just kind of arbitrarily. Now you're going to see we have these really weird effects right here. And let me show you why this is happening. The reason this occurs is because first we're doing, let me turn these off. First we're doing a sub D, which is rounding that corner. And then we're doing the array after the sub D has finished. So what we want to do is we want to actually flip the order here. So what I want to do is I first want to array so we don't have that result and then run the sub D but you're gonna see it's still doing that uh, effect. And the reason for that, if you think about it intuitively, is that if I duplicated this, right, these two vertices are gonna be overlapping. So what you need to do is you need to tell the array modifier that you want those vertices to be merged. So if I turn on the sub D, so both of these are turned on, but I tell the array to merge those vertices, that uh, effect is gonna go away. So again, Make sure the sub D is going second. So array first, merge the vertices, and then run the sub D, and you'll have this result right here. Now, this is a little bit interesting. You can actually go in here and go to deform. We can go to deform, simple deform. I'm gonna change the axis to Z, and let me also make sure everything's applied, which it is, and I'm gonna go to bend instead of twist. Now, we might just need to flip the axis here. I just kind of mess with these until it works. In this case, if I bend over the Y, I can actually, you know, extend this a little bit more. So if you don't like, you know, where this is positioned, you can actually use the bend to bend that uh, ending point a little bit more to kind of get that result. So, so far we have the actual object and then we have the array, the sub D, and then a little bit of more depth, uh, deformation right there. 
Now what I want to do is press Shift A and then add in a curve. We're going to go to Path. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees over the Z and then just scale that. And then I'm just going to take these points here on the curve and then move them up. Move this up as well. And then I can go to this object right here, add another modifier for curve under deform. And then we're going to choose the curve object right here to add that on. Now you might need to change the axis depending on your setup, but I'm just going to use the X because that's the correct one in my situation. And then if you want to extend this, you can go back to the array, increase the count a few times. And now you're going to have this really clean type of a, uh, you know, ridging effect kind of right here. So I'm just going to collapse these. And again, if you turn all of these off first, what we're doing is we're adding in an array and then we're doing a sub D and then we're deforming it a bit more. And then we're adding that along a curve, very simple, very straightforward workflow. And you can do this for all sorts of different designs. Now this is going to be a bit heavy on the poly count. So, you know, you might not want to have a super high sub D resolution, but uh, you can kind of decide where you want that uh, for yourself. So that is it. That is how you make this uh, type of result right here. Very simple, very easy, and hopefully you learn a little bit in this tutorial. Now guys, if you need our help with Blender personally, whether that's for modeling, learning how to use the software or portfolio, or maybe you just need our one-on-one -on -one help or some more uh, do-it-yourself training programs. We have all of this available over at blenderbros.com. Just go to the link in the top of the description or in the pinned comment. You can check all of our training programs out. And if you need additional coaching, we have that as an option as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.